and talking to Matt Real, you know, he's got a small package. Lions, ties, and ties, so my. Welcome to That's Good Sports, I am Brandon. I cannot believe I have a bigger package than Cam Newton Perna. No wonder Cam wanted to emphasize to keep pounding it this week. Without further ado, I will say something that I've been wanting to say for a long time. Keep pounding. He's got a small package. Keep pounding. If you have a small package, keep pounding it, and eventually you will come through and score. The Panthers got a big win against a Kyler Murrayless Cardinals team, and all it cost them was paying Sam Darnold, Cam Newton, and Teddy Bridgewater this week. You saw the meme, and it's just too damn good. They're paying both of Cam's replacements, and now Cam to replace his replacements. Should NFL teams start practicing getting screwed by the officials as situational football? The Saints fell victim to the worst call of the week. The Steelers fell victim to tying the Lions with sick Ben not playing. And the Chiefs are back atop the AFC West. Let's look at all the best and worst happenings from the NFL this week. I'm not gonna tell you to subscribe to this channel. I'm just not gonna tell you to do it. I'm tired, I'm tired of asking. Today's episode is brought to you by hellofresh.com slash that's good sports 14. Between that's good sports, that's good Broncos, the Grassy Perna show and clickbait sports, I barely have time to think. Let alone go to the store and shop slash plan for dinner. This week, we made the pork carnitas tacos, which were absolutely delicious. I've mastered all HelloFresh has to offer. I get the family-sized meal to save my wife and I time with leftovers. And they have quick 20-minute meal options that provide easy cleanup and low prep times. And it's holiday season, and HelloFresh isn't just for meals. Their marketplace has great holiday-themed snacks and desserts like Pillsbury pumpkin cookie dough and many other ideas. Or if you're trying to counterbalance the excess of holiday calories, HelloFresh is a great way to stick to a meal plan with calorie-smart pescatarian and vegetarian options. Using HelloFresh also cuts down on food waste by 25% compared to shopping at the grocery store. So go to HelloFresh.com slash That's Good Sports 14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. Link below. Again, HelloFresh.com slash That's Good Sports 14. Bam! All right, best and worst, beginning with Thursday Night Football. Ravens, Dolphins. Best, I'd be remiss if I didn't include the greatest big man touchdown in NFL history that also did not count. Robert Hunt catches a pass and then goes airborne for the would-be touchdown, but the no fun league suddenly decides offensive linemen can't be eligible receivers. Saints versus Titans, worst. Titans sustain another injury, lose Bud Dupree in this one. Best, the Titans have won six in a row despite being one of the most injured teams in football week to week. Longest streak of wins in the NFL right now. They've defeated five teams who were in the playoffs last season, and they did it this week without King Henry and Julio Jones. Right now, the AFC Super Bowl path goes through Tennessee. Worst, Ty Montgomery's pinky went sideways like Paul Giamatti after trying to catch a pass. Now, I'm no architect, but uh, I don't think a finger should be pointing at a 90 degree angle. Worst, a huge Saints interception in the end zone gets negated by a horrendous roughing penalty. I mean, come on. Uh, okay, I'm gonna sit here and try to not lose my fucking mind. He's got a small package. Let me breathe through this one because I cannot stomach any more officiating like this. The Titans may have lost Derrick Henry, but they gained a far more powerful asset. The NFL officials who threw a pass interference after that to give the Titans a touchdown. Best, Trevor Simeon leads a touchdown drive, down eight points, throwing a TD to Marquez Galloway. Clutch, Trevor is back, baby. Almost 
Worst, after a five-yard penalty, the Saints are forced to go for two points from their own seven-yard line, and Simeon's pass to Mark Ingram falls incomplete, as does the comeback attempt. Buffalo versus New York Jets. Best? This is the Josh Allen we missed last week when he kept getting overshadowed by Josh Allen. If the Bills can play all the teams with losing records, not name the Jaguars, in the playoffs, they will win the Super Bowl. Worst, everybody's favorite feel-good story of the year, Mike White had a tough day at the office. Josh Allen ended the great Mike White hype in this one. The Jets backup QB threw four picks in his touching tribute to his teammate Zach Wilson. Joe Flacco ended up uh, getting in the game and lit it up going three for three with the touchdown. That should buy him at least one more giant NFL contract. Worst, Josh Allen's spidey senses weren't working. He got blasted back to Wyoming on the safety blitz. Best, maybe that hit actually knocked some sense into Josh Allen, seeing only Stephon Diggs thereafter. Allen made his best throw in weeks to Diggs when he threw two touchdowns in a row to Diggs, as the first one didn't count because part of Diggs' arse was out of bounds, like a blonde woman in a bar with Urban Meyer. Best, the Bills finished the day with four rushing touchdowns, including one from Isaiah McKenzie. Josh Allen did not lead the team in rushing. Devin Singletary did. And if I'm Buffalo, I would try and get running back Matt Breda more involved in the rushing attack moving forward. Lions versus Steelers best. The third to last pick in the draft. Jermar Johnson ripped off a long touchdown run against that vaunted Steelers defense. Both Lions running backs look like they might will this team to their first victory. DeAndre Swift popped an Olympic-worthy hurdle over the Steelers, something he did earlier this year to the Packers' defense. However, I need to see him go full Billy Sims and karate kick a motherfucker to the face before I get too excited. That's why Billy is my idol. Worst, Mason Rudolph. Still not as good as a very, very washed Big Ben. Rudolph threw this easy touchdown right into the dirt. I've seen high school quarterbacks get cut for throws better than that. Although Rudolph was one for one on assaulting his own offensive lineman. Best. The Lions tie! The Lions tie! And it wasn't a knot at the end of a rope they would use to hang themselves. Instead, they forced the Steelers to play an entire quarter of overtime football where neither pathetic team could score. It was a thing of American beauty. And by that, I mean the opening scene of American Beauty where Kevin Spacey is masturbating alone in the shower. <gasps> or as I call it, Friar Muthing, who inexplicably fumbles the game away in overtime for the tie. He followed up his best game last week with his worst game in this one. Speaking of masturbating, the Steelers can't beat Goff. They were literally the first team in the NFL who refused to beat Goff when playing the Lions. Usually when your QB gives up porn, you gain dignity. He's got a small package. Jags vs. Colts, best. Indy jumped out to a 17-0 lead thanks to a blocked punt that resulted in a touchdown and an unstoppable Jonathan Taylor. I think Jonathan Taylor is the best back in the league right now. He had 93 rushing yards in the first quarter, 9.3 yards per carry, and this incredible touchdown that Quentin Nelson should be credited with an assist for. Best! Jamal Agnew is not just a kick returner. Turning on the Jets for a 66-yard touchdown on offense. This man is the fastest player on the field, and I'm not sure why he doesn't touch the ball more often. Probably because Urban Meyer said he's going to stay as far away as possible from anyone who plays the game fast and loose. Worst! The Colts producing almost no offense after that magnificent first quarter and still getting the win because... They played the Jaguars. Both teams were atrocious on third down, but the Colts are now fully involved in the AFC playoff race, winning four of their last five. And then, upset alert, Tampa Bay versus Washington. Best. It's a playoff rematch, and yes, Taylor Heineke is Brady's weakness. 
How else do you explain Tom Brady throwing two picks in the first quarter? One really horrific throw and one you can blame on number one, Jalen Darden, who had the ball popped into the sky and picked off by Johnson, giving the football team a much needed booster here. Best, Washington football team getting their biggest lead of the season at 13 to zero after Taylor Heineke dropped this dime bag right into DeAndre Carter's hands, where he was immediately arrested for both drug possession and scoring too many points against Tom Brady. Worst, the football team loses Chase Young to a torn ACL. A small sacrifice so Brady can stay young. Bring me the blood of the young so I can live forever, Satan. That's what Brady said before the game in his weekly seance. Best, Washington football team puts together their longest drive of the season to hand the Bucks their third loss of the season. Terry McLaurin made the big dick catch of the week towards the end of this drive, getting lit up on a clutch third and five, but holding on to the ball there. Best on fourth and goal, Ron Rivera returns to to the river where he used to run boats going for it and then being rewarded with a game ceiling touchdown. Thanks to Antonio Gibson. Tim, we're a very dumb football team. Which is confusing to say after losing to the football team. Browns versus Patriots best. Mac Jones was dealing, throwing three touchdowns, including this strike to Kendrick Bourne ultimatum in the first half. Jones went 19 to 23 for a trio of tugs and 198 passing yards after Baker led the Browns to an opening touchdown drive. Worst, Baker never even hit 100 yards through the air, leaving early with an injury, a new injury, re-aggravating his old injury, probably both. Either way, he's essentially at Drew Brees level of health from 2020. The Browns had to bring in Case Keenum to finish the game. Case Keenum, Joe Flacco, and Trevor Simeon all losing this week to honor their former home, Denver. Best, Ramondre Stevenson had his NFL coming out party. Stevenson is officially gay for touchdowns. Stevenson had 20 carries for 100 yards, which makes the math super easy. That's an even five yards per carry and two rushing touchdowns. Both he and Damian Harris were in concussion protocol la this last week. So I, I guess the Patriots care less about Stevenson's brain since Damian Harrison didn't play. Best, the Pats put in their backup, but for another reason, here's Brian Hoyer throwing Jacoby Myers his first NFL touchdown. Jacoby had 1,500 receiving yards, 134 receptions before he reached the end zone for the first time. That is the most by any ball catcher ever in NFL history. Essentially making him the Tim Tebow of touchdown celibacy. Falcons fall to the Cowboys, best, Turns out the Broncos beat a team that's still really, really good. Worst, the Falcons were down 36 to three at halftime after a pair of CeeDee Lamb touchdowns and a blocked punt resulted in a touchdown and a two point play because Mike McCarthy is trying to see if he can apply extra points from this game to last week's loss to the Broncos. Doesn't work that way, Mike. You can't erase that loss, but this helps. The big three all scored Zeke, CD, and Dak, and Dallas, good help pending, might just have the most complete offense in the league. Best, Dan Quinn's defense against his former team. Three points allowed, held Matt Ryan to 117 yards, three interceptions, and two sacks. Not a bad revenge game. Panthers at Cardinals, the curse. Best, the Cam Newton package pays off. Just a one yard TD, so I, I guess it was a small package. Cam Newton was promptly penalized though for taking off his helmet and taunting Aaron Rodgers. Cam was caught yelling, I'm back, I'm back, after the touchdown. We know Cam, but it's time to stop harassing Aaron Rodgers. Worst, Colt McCoy goes down with an injury. Enter Chris Strevler? He has tattoos, he's from the CFL but he does not have what it takes to get the Cardinals back into this game. Best, PJ Walker is still undefeated. 5-0 in the XFL, 2-0 in the NFL. The man does not lose. Honestly, the Panthers should keep PJ at the helm and use Cam situationally until that fails. Vikings versus Chargers. Best, Justin Jefferson hauled in a pass on third and 15. Then flip the ball to Keenan Allen, who was sitting on the bench on the Chargers sideline. Even better, 
This was not called for taunting. Jefferson had a great day, hauling in nine passes for 143 yards, and most importantly, talk shit to my least favorite receiver in the NFL. Worst. Chargers running back Larry Roundtree celebrating after scoring a touchdown in a loss and simultaneously auditioning for Dancing with the Stars, something he may have plenty of time to do as it looks more and more like the Chargers season will tragically end early. Best, Tyler Conklin, the most Viking looking player in the NFL playing tight end for the Vikings and grabbing two touchdowns on just three receptions in this game. He was the difference in the red zone for Minnesota. We saw a perfect day from their kicker as well, which is fitting in a win against the Chargers. Seahawks versus Packers, worst. Russell Wilson, shutout for the first time in his career as a Seahawk. Now before the game, they said Wilson rehabbed 19 hours a day to get his finger to recover so quickly. Here's some footage of him recovering. Don't want to. Please. No. My thought, maybe try fucking sleeping a bit more, Russell, so you don't come back a week too soon and play like crap. Worst, both Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers throwing interceptions in the end zone, proving COVID and finger injuries affect quarterbacks exactly the same. Russell Wilson has now thrown 12 interceptions in nine games when facing the Packers. Best, DK Metcalf was ejected and also tried to sneak back into the game by walking to the huddle. Pretty hilarious, this guy <laughs> thinks nobody will notice if he tries to sneak back onto the field. Worst, Carlos Dunlap getting penalized for throwing a shoe after the Seahawks get a stop in a key situation. Everyone is pointing out the infamous Florida Gators shoe throw that cost them the college football playoffs. I think Dunlap though, wearing number eight, like Kirk Cousins, was just channeling his inner non-clutch gene like Kirk who this season tossed the shoe aside right before a snap. Finally, Chiefs versus Raiders best. Raiders punter AJ Cole forces a fumble at the end of the first quarter, giving his team the ball back. Although he was later outdone by Chiefs punter Tommy Townsend, who did fool the defense again on a conversion I can't explain. Best. This is one of the best throws you'll see all day. Derek Carr threads the needle in between three Chiefs to Brian Edwards for the touchdown. Worst, Derek Carr was the Raiders leading rusher in this game with 18 yards, 18 yards. Kenyon Drake, Josh Jacobs could only manage 16 apiece. Worst, Deshaun Jackson's first catch as a Raider very quickly becomes Deshaun Jackson's first fumble as a Raider. This was a brutal fumble in that the Raiders would have been set up to score a touchdown there and cut the Chiefs lead down to three. Instead, the best play the Raiders made was preventing serious injury by stopping the game to pick up surgical scissors off the field. And this sad Chiefs lineman tries to get the penalty called on Quinton Jefferson. Worst, I'm not sure if Patrick Mahomes is starting to figure it out again, throwing five touchdowns in the win or if the Raiders are remembering to play like the Raiders. Both are possibilities at this point, and the AFC West reverts to proper form with the Chiefs atop the division, and the three other teams losing inexplicably, making no damn sense to anyone. Thanks for watching the best and worst of NFL Sunday. Uh, come back later, I'll have the Broncos recap of the Eagles Broncos game, even though I don't want to recap it, I'm gonna do it because you demanded it be done. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe here.